Football season is upon us, friends. Football season's upon us. Um, it's been very fun at the time of this recording. The, uh, the first game was last night, which is a fun game uh, between the Chiefs and Ravens. Tonight is Packers and uh, Eagles from Brazil. Oh, okay. How cool is that? I mean, I don't keep up with football as much anymore. And I was like, sure. Playing Fridays now? Uh, it's because it's like the. It's game for first week. Yeah, first week. And they're in Brazil. And they're in Brazil, which is. You cool. kind of just take the venue um, when it's available. And we just had our fantasy draft, and our we have Lamar Jackson. He did well yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah, football's upon us. It's fun. Football's upon us. And we want to remind you that. The Dumb Dad Podcast is presented by Bet Online. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. Football. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games, like while you're watching the game, while you're, the while game. you're looking at it. And it's yeah. happening. You know what's we'll fun? Betting on it from you know Brazil. It'll be more fun. <laughs> Think you know your stuff? Get in on our two hundred thousand dollar mega contest and pick five games against the spread every week for your chance at weekly prizes and a share of two hundred thousand dollars. Man, when the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of the over one hundred and fifty slots games. Head to the website today and get in on the action. That's right, bet online. The game starts here. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to the Dumb Dad Podcast. My name is Kevin, and I'm a dumb dad. Hey, everybody. My name is Evan, and I'm a dumb dad. And on today's episode, Kevin teaches us uh, how he hotboxes his kids. I hate that. (laughs) And on this episode, Evan turns a little me time into a little lease time. That's true. Cheers, Demi. Cheers. Tonight we're sipping on a little bit of rye whiskey Mm -hmm. that we bought in Kentucky. Bought it in Kentucky. So I thought it'd be fun to maybe tell the quick story of how we found um, M.B. Rowland. Distillery. Distillery. How did we do that? We were on the road, and we were driving from St. Louis to Nashville, Mm -hmm. and... You know, we had we had routed it ahead of time of just to see how long is this going to take. Yeah, Great. not really studying the map when it says not over stu- five hours. <laughs> not really. You're just kind of like, all right, it'll be five hours. Fine, let's just heads down. Let's get it done. Yeah. And we were driving along, and, and the drive from St. Louis to Nashville was so pretty and fun, and it was just like you know, just it was different landscapes. Although, like Chicago to St. Louis was just flat corn, corn. It was just all the corn. Saw all of. It. I was. Saying oh, there that was because moments we were, where we thought the clouds look crazy. What if there was a tornado? We had that moment for a while, and <laughs> we kind of were like wishing, like ten percent wishing hoping. there was and a then, tornado, yeah. but like no, you don't want that. And then we quickly mapped out like, will we just reverse it, or what will we do? Like kind of play it by ear, like yeah, how, how fast are tornado? I know we was like, how fast does a tornado go? <laughs> yeah, we were though, we were really dumb about it. <laughs> but then at one point we passed the sign that was like, "Welcome to Kentucky," mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, and yep, we're still on the right track." This is my first thought. Yeah. Was, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we're just going from one state to the other. Why not, what are we Why are we in the third? I'm, I'm not good with cities, but I know Nashville's not in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. So I pulled up my my uh, my phone and did the GPS, and I was like, oh, yeah, we're just going to like pop into Kentucky for like, <laughs> pop in. I mean, it's a five-hour drive. Pop in but for across like- across the skinny part. We're just- it, it was like for- Maybe like less than a hundred miles. It was like it wasn't, I, yeah. If that, I probably it was. It was it wasn't very long. So it's like, oh, we're gonna pop in and then drop down, and then okay. So if we're in Kentucky, oh, we should probably go to get yeah, a bourbon distillery. I don't know if we're ever gonna go to Kentucky again. I know it's like well because it was like I mean that's much, one of those. It was mo- like how much spare time do we have? How, was, if we if we didn't stop, we're landing at the hotel at three three. And so we give ourselves 20 minutes, maybe. And then we were trying to like, because sound checks at five. We were like really kind of dialing in like, how much time would we actually have? And so then we thought, well, let's just pick the one closest to off the freeway. What's the one like props to MB rolling? Because I bet this is, they get a lot of traffic this way. Because I was finding a lot. They probably like, do. This one looks fun. Yeah. This one looks fun. Yeah. This one, this one's three minutes off the highway. We're going to that one. That's the one we're going to. Map it. Add a stop to your adventure. Yes, please. Let's go. <laughs> and we went and we went in and it was very funny because the guy was like, uh, tasting's free and we're going to give you the walkthrough, blah, blah, blah. And we were like, so pick your four. And I was like, we'll have one. Yeah, we'll taste one, please. I don't want to taste one. Because it's, yeah. it's also not a shot. It's like, it was like a a half, I think it's like it a like half a an ounce, yeah. I think. And it was like, 
we will have uh, a, one tasting and we'll just pick it and we'll be on our way. Yeah. Uh, but we tasted uh, we tasted this uh, rye that was like their single barrel. It was really good. It's really good. It was great. We got the bottle, hit the road again. It was very we were fast. We in and out of there in less than half an hour. Yeah. For sure. And it was just like, we got to say we did it. Yeah. And uh, there was one funny moment of it, which was that um, we were like, we got to get going, man. We're, we're headed to Nashville. And they're like, oh, what are you guys doing in Nashville? I was like, we're doing a show. Um, we just got to get going. Like, and they were like, starting to be a slippery slope. They're like, oh, you guys play? And it's like, the second, I think you said, we have a show, yeah. which is fair. I would have said the same thing. Second, you, it came out of your mouth. We have a show. I was like, oh, man. He thinks we're a musician. He thinks we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> you guys play? We should have just said yes. No, we talked for 90 minutes on stage, actually, about how it's important to keep wet wipes in the glove yeah. compartment. Thanks for having us. If it wasn't uh, so obvious that we were from California when we first walked in the door. We have to go. That was your second clue. Um, um, we will not talk politics. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. It was, it, was, uh, it was fun. I mean, they're, they're nice fellers. And uh, yeah, it was cool. I remember the, the, one of the craziest things. We pull off the highway. And again, it's less than four miles from the highway. But we pull off and get out of the car. And it was like you couldn't hear anything outside. Yeah. That is and something you don't get in LA. You don't realize how quiet it is. Like you don't realize the, how how because we're not even in the city right now. No, but we're just kind of on top of each other still. But it was like and we see it was like is something wrong. Yeah, <laughs> it's so. This is exactly quiet. what you hear before a bomb explodes. Yeah, <laughs> or the tornado starts, and now we're outside the car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so thank you again to MB Roll and uh, Distillery. For uh, treating us very kindly yeah. and, and getting us on our Something way. Something to sip on. And speaking of uh, car rides, this will take me to my dumb dad moment. Oh, bro. We'll get right into Cheers it. Cheers to that. Well done, pal. So my dumb dad moment mm-hmm. is uh, brought to you by, uh, we'll say overstimulation okay. or filling up your schedule too much. One okay. or the other. Okay. Kind of whatever you think. We'll dial in it, I'm sure, as the story moves on. So the kids out off school Monday, mm-hmm. um, which we... We kept it pretty good. We kept them pretty good and busy. Um, kept them at a pretty good clip at the, the at the forty weekend, and then, um, but then Monday it's like <sighs> early day. The kids have swim. Swim is not until four thirty five. Mm-hmm. They're out of school at one thirty. My daughter didn't get homework, so they just get home. It's a hundred and something degrees, <laughs> and it was just one of those things where it was like. I made this mistake a couple times last year uh, where I would let the kids, yeah, you know what? You got something this afternoon. You go on screens. I don't care, which I'm not against. I'm not saying it was the wrong call. I'll definitely do that again this year, but I think I just got too comfortable with it. So I was trying to, I was kind of playing with the idea of like, well, they don't, one, well, they don't need to be on screen. Sometimes you just say, hey, we're not going anywhere and find something to do. We're just not going to do screens. I'm trying to cut back on screens in our house um, during the week. Mm-hmm. Just in just in general, we're just trying to really cut back on that. Same, but you find that the more you just schedule your kids' stuff to do, it's like, oh, I don't even have to say no. The scheduling <laughs> thing makes it easier, but the scheduling thing is is dangerous because, like I said, sometimes I'll let them watch screens because they have something scheduled. So I'm like, well, I know they're not going to be on it for two hours, three hours. Oh, it's I like see what you, mean. Yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. can be on it for an hour and then we'll go. Or it's like, well, then, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. I have done that and I will do it again. But it was just one of those things where I was like, I'm just trying to start the school year off right, like. As little as possible. Sometimes I'm, I'm always, I'm always, I always kick myself when I tell them, guys, no screens, and they're like, okay, and they find something to do, and they never come up to me saying they're bored, and you're just like, oh yeah, that's more of a, this is a me thing, like, I'm I giving them the access, and they're still at that age, like my daughter's probably got a couple years left before she does start doing that. Can I just watch them replace? I'm so bored. Yeah, but right now she's yeah. still got the imagination of a little child and she'll just draw a read and he'll just play with dinosaurs. And it's like, okay. Yeah. But maybe I, you're not curating something to do necessarily is that like, you can learn how to keep yourself busy when you need to. That's what you're curating now. I'm curating Let's go like, for that. It's yeah. Well, yeah, you're curating like you're bored. Get over it. Yeah. Find something well, to find do. Something to it's do. not my and problem. Rely on the one thing. You're bored. It's not my problem. Yeah. Right now. It'll be my problem at this. St- you're bored. Fantastic. That's when the most brilliant ideas have ever come about. In I don't world. want to do that. I want them to love me. <laughs> That's the most annoying thing. <laughs> Um, don't do that. 
That's what my buddy Lance says he does. I know. And then, but then they're like, "Oh God, Dad!" And then they go find something to do. It's a you like, thing to oh, say. The last thing I want to do is sit here and listen to that. I so I'm going to listen go find to your soliloquy. To do. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Fine. All right. <laughs> so um, we still have a couple. Well, we re-upped our like a couple of our passes, and one of the passes we have is to Sky Zone, yeah. which we re-upped because the heat wasn't going anywhere. No. Back in spades. The kids got home. And I was like, guys, you know, have a snack, have something to drink. Um, we'll leave shortly. I'm going to get everything together. We're going to go to Sky Zone, and then we're going to go to swim. And they were like, okay. So they were just kind of eating, walking around. And then my wife walks in. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, what do you mean? I think you're going to Sky Zone. I am, I am going to Sky Zone. I'm getting everything together. And she's like, but like, you should be leaving like now. <laughs> and I was like, because we don't. There's two sky zones. One is close and not great. <laughs> and one is farther and is awesome. Yeah. So we always just go to the farther one. Um, so she was like, if you're going to drive, it's going to be like a half hour to get there. And I was like, yeah, no, I know that. I'm clocking it, but you're right. I'm probably pushing it. So I get the kids in the car and I'm like, guys, you're going to have an hour there and that's it. You yeah. have like a 90 minute pass. Oh, that's it. I thought you were going to spend it like 10 minutes. No, I wouldn't have done that. That's a real, that's the dumb dad moment, full breaks. <laughs> I was like, I was pretty good. I was like, uh, hey guys, you're only gonna have like an hour. I know really, I know you don't know time, but just, I just want you to know, yeah. I'm gonna tell you when it's time to leave, not the weird ominous voice because they get bracelets and it's like, if you're wearing an orange bracelet, your time Please is up. Head to the front, grab My, your socks and your belongings. I tried to make a story the last time I was there. But the audio came out so bad because it makes me laugh every time where it's just like, <laughs> you know, if you're wearing orange bracelet, your time is up. Please exit the thing. If you're not wearing orange bracelet, enjoy. Have fun. And then it goes through like. Thanks the for hopping on in yeah, here today. They're like, they're like listening. All the things. If you get you hot, you know, go ahead over to the refreshment center to cool. And then like the last thing he says is like, be safe, have fun and know your limits. And I laugh. <laughs> I laugh at that every time. <laughs> That one's for you, parents. It's not for the kids. Looking at you, the guy that didn't look very comfortable bending over to tie his shoe. Talking to you, watch me. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. Know your limits. It's like, that's... <laughs> at the jump zone. <laughs> that's a great... What a great thing to say. I appreciate it so much. Anyway, <laughs> so we get there. Uh, it was almost a dumb dad moment out the gate because I walk in and I was like, Hi. And I like, give an account. And I was like, yep, give him my information. She's like, great. Just so you know, we have a private event today. And I was like, oh. Mm. And she's like, so you can, you guys can come in and jump, but you can only be here for an hour. And I was like, oh. well, that's a freebie. Well, you just said the magic. It's a freebie. You, that's a that free, is, freebie. You get to be, you want to be the bad guy? This is great news. Because when you walked up, it's like, Remember we used to take the kids to the zoo and it's like, go to the zoo and they get all excited and you're like, yeah, they're going to the zoo and you yeah. pull up the zoo and there's like 12 school buses yeah. out front and you're like, oh, okay. Come on, man. Oh, the lion got out again. We have to go. <laughs> again. So, the lion. It's not a very good gate. It just keeps getting out. And now it's gone. The Daryl thought the picket fence looked <laughs> cute, but. They can jump. <laughs> Who'd have thought? I guess they are cats. <laughs> I had my doubts. <laughs> <laughs> but so the kids play for a while. They have fun. They have a great time. And then, guys, it's time to go. You know, like we're pushing it now. It's been close to an hour. Let's get going. So they they listen. That went great so far. It's all going swell. Get in the car. I route it. We're going to be five minutes early. Not great, but fine. And <laughs> yeah, not one, but. That's a lot to ask to get ready for swim. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like change shower before yep. get in there yeah yeah sub five it's fine um i made up some time which was lucky because it's about rush hour um but it still took us about 40 minutes to get back which is the exact amount of time it takes both of my children to fall asleep <laughs> both of them i can't tell you the last time my eight-year-old fell asleep in the car Yo, right, really? But I mean, that's crazy. She doesn't usually fall asleep in the car anymore. Yeah. Like she'll 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 tough it out for a long ride. And like we were at one point just like stuck in traffic. I'm like, all right, eight minutes. Eight minutes, we're gonna run in. And guys, we're gonna Oh no. I was gonna no. say, how did you realize was it in the rear view? It was in the rear view. Yeah. Well, it was in the rear view, I could see my son 
and I couldn't see my daughter's head. And I was like, huh? Oh, yeah. And I look like behind over my right shoulder and like can't see her. She's leaned to the window and now we're like stopped on the highway. And I look and she's like head against the window. I'm just, oh, <laughs> just like out cold. And it's probably because she jumped at a gym for an hour yeah. and then got in a hundred degree car. Oh my God. I don't know that she fell asleep as much as passed out. <laughs> Could you imagine if you fell asleep in the car in the shape that your kids do and sleep for like 35 consecutive minutes, like in that shape? I can imagine that. I can't imagine what comes next. Uh, they're using the jaws of life to cut a bigger hole out because they can't shape your butt. It's, yeah. You'd be petrified in that state for like three days. They'd have to soak you in like Epsom salt in the hospital for like a week. I feel week. like they'd have to jab me with a needle that, uh, what are the adrenaline needle? They give Uma Thurman in uh, yeah. Pulp Fiction. Yeah, exactly. And right in the, the heart. <laughs> then yeah. you just like rip the roof off and like stand <laughs> out of the car. So yeah, they fell asleep and um, I took a picture of it and sent it to my wife. I was like, I have my dumb dad moment this week. <laughs> <laughs> Found it. Don't you worry about it. You can stop writing them down, babe. Don't uh, you worry about it. I got Save those for next time. It did have me. kind of a happy ending. They did actually wake up fairly easily um, and... I mean, yeah, they were definitely. Did they you, were definitely did you break checked them? They were definitely late. Yeah, just <laughs> oh. boom, and that's why you wear it over your shoulder. <laughs> How do your knees taste? <laughs> it's swim. <laughs> Child Protective Services. That didn't happen. <laughs> oh, I thought we had them. Click. Editor's note. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's fantastic. Um, my dumb dad moment this week is brought to you by selfishness, or yeah. I don't know. Just one track don't mind. Don't pull back from one track, selfishness. No, because I don't think that's, then it seems like you're not. That wasn't the intention. It's like one track mind. That's what it is. Brought to you by a one track mind. <sighs> okay. You got it. You're in a safe space. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah, um, come, on. come on. Let it all out. Going to, I don't remember where we were going. To be honest with you, we went so many damn places over the Labor Day weekend that but I have no idea where we were going in this particular dumb damn moment. This is already we a so great story. But we were going somewhere is the point. Okay. And... Somewhere for like the afternoon. So uh, go bags packed, extra snacks packed. Okay. Um, like maybe some stuff to do in the car, making sure that it's in the car. We mm-hmm. have like seat back stuff. We, yeah. don't, we don't do screens in the car. So it's like there's stuff in your seat backs. Pack it with books and whatever. Yeah. Um, just like all that, that kind of a morning where it's like, you know, yeah. we're definitely going to swing through Starbucks because mommy and dad are going to need the coffee for the rest of the day. Sure. <laughs> that, you know, that kind of. Yeah. A morning, right? And um, again, as we said many times, it's hot here. It was hot. And it was mm-hmm. like, um, we've been trying to do our best. And if you, anybody, anybody, one of us thinks of it, my wife and I, it's like 15 minutes before we leave, I'm going to go start the car. Yeah, it's a nice thing it's, to do. Which is a, it's a clutch move when it's like already hot. Maybe, you know, maybe we were going somewhere where like kind of got to have something on that's, you can't just wear like real leisurely short shorts and a tank top. Like, mm-hmm. So it's going to be warm. Anyway, all that kind of a morning, just to set the stage, right? Yeah. So uh, I, I'm like, okay, I'll go start the car. My wife's like, okay. And then um, I'm sitting out there for like, I don't know, 10 minutes or something like that. Then finally the kids come out. And then my wife comes out like another five minutes later, and she like puts all the stuff in the trunk and everything. And I was like. <laughs> I'm already so confused. I was like. I feel like I know. The are you okay? And she's like. And I was like, what's going on? She's like, nothing. I'm just, I'm good. Like, but I was like, well, something. I did something. Yeah. And I was like, are you frustrated? She's like, a little. And I was like, okay, can you tell me what you're frustrated about? She's like, yeah, it just sucks to like, like, I'm still trying to put myself together. And then I also got the kids ready and then like got all the snacks together. Like I did all that. And like you came and started the car. And I was like, yeah, that was not a very night, very well thought out plan by me. This is at your house. Yeah. Why'd you have to guard the car? <laughs> I didn't have to guard the car. I just thought like, oh, they'll be out any second. Mm. But it's like hadn't thought of. But are they any? I mean, I could have also thought, do we have all this stuff? Yeah. Do we not? Should yeah. I get it ready? You're just in there, just maybe. Or if it was even farting ready, in there, just could I have put it in the car by myself? Yeah. Done anything other than like, I started the car. <laughs> that is so dumb. <laughs> the second you said, I started like, the car, and 10 minutes later, the family came out. I was like, 
Wait, you were still in the car? Just sitting there? <laughs> just sitting in the car? Yeah. First of all, that's not even fun for the first 10 minutes because the car's awful inside. Well, I was taking one for the team, Kevin. <laughs> that's right. Did you say that to her? No. Did you say that? No, I'm still alive, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Just like. Yeah, it's a lapse in judgment. That's. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Not selfishness. It wasn't really that. It was. It's selfishness if you did it on purpose. No, I didn't. I didn't. I mean, I did. I Put went your out phone there to on do, do it not disturb. Like, yeah. <laughs> Catch a couple Z's. You're going to get a, gonna get a type five. Out, and then she comes outside, the seats reclined, and she's like, <laughs> the guy did that to me. Did I tell you that? When we left on tour, I called the Uber guy or Lyft guy, uh-huh. and he came to my house, and I like scheduled it for like 1045 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I get a text. And he's like, here, I'm here at 1030. And I was like, okay, well, I... Just 15 minutes early. I'm still like getting stuff together. Yeah. So I, I just texted back and I was like, I'm, you know, I scheduled for schedule because then it said like, take your time, but after five minutes you'll start accruing every two minutes like waiting fees. And I was like, Whoa. know how that works? <laughs> I sent you. I sent 10:45. Yeah. So I, I sent 10:45. He gets there 10:30, and I'm like, well, I'll just let you know. I scheduled it for 10:45, so I'll be out in a little bit. And he's like, okay. Um, and when I got out there, he was 100 percent asleep. Good man. It's one I of those. Know. One of those. And I was like, oh, he's asleep. All right. So I kind of just like opened the door and like threw my bag, which I knew it would wake him up, you know, but I calmly did it. And then I went back to the trunk and he, I could see him kind of like uh, sit up and then the thing got popped and then you know, popped and put the. Did you open the door in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, just about. But he was like, hey, man. <laughs> Fantastic guy. Got us at the airport and almost. Maybe an illegal amount of time. He was such a crazy driver. Love it. It was a fun trip. But yeah, I thought that was so funny when I was like, oh, that guy's definitely sleeping. There's nothing better than a dumb dad moment where you tell the story and you can go, oh, I found it. Mm-hmm. Like in the story, you hear it and you go, I know what you did. That was yeah, one of I those. Know. When you said 10 minutes later, I went, uh oh. I, I know what happened here. And like, the kids were still in their underwear. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> Screens. <laughs> Screens. <laughs> I felt bad, obviously, because it was like, sure. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, uh, just like, <laughs> I wasn't mad. I was just disappointed in myself. Sure. <laughs> right. But also, like, what are you, stupid? <laughs> mm hmm. I'm not so stupid. Yeah. Those moments where you're 100% wrong, especially with your spouse, where you're just kind of yelling at yourself. In your head. And you're just like, stupid, dumb idiot. Yeah, the first 10 minutes of the car ride weren't great. There's some moments you mess up with your spouse and you're like, man, I wish I hadn't done that. Good to know. Be more conscious of that next time. And then there's a couple where you go, what the f***, man? (laughs) What were you thinking? You knew the whole, the second they started to explain it, you went, I wish you'd stop talking. I love you. You're right. I'm wrong. But I need you to stop talking because I'm mad at myself now. Yeah, because when you get in the car and you're like, I'm, I just wanted to say I'm real. I know I, but I'm just really sorry. Can we go? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you go? Yeah, I just got to run in and take a leak real quick. <laughs> oh, I forgot my wallet. Can you drive? Can you drive? Ah, oh, let's read somebody else's dumb dad moment. Let's I, I want to get, get out of here. <laughs> I actually have one for you. That'll um, I have one for you that'll kind of make you feel better about spousal <sighs> okay. mistakes. We're gonna read some some submissions. This might be the new thing that we do, guys. I think it's a fun thing, and I think we should. This one was submitted by Michael. Thank Michael. you, Michael. Thanks for writing. And by the way, guys, if you want to write in mm-hmm. your dumb parent submissions, you can email us dumbdadpod at gmail.com or you can DM us on Instagram. We are at the dumb dads. Obviously, it's better to email us, but we will take either one. If you don't feel like using email because you're like, I don't have dial-up. You can literally write I don't it. have dial-up. We still have anybody yet to write us one. You can handwrite. We one. have a PO box. It's PO on box there. is listed link in, in bio. The link in bio. So somebody do it. Somebody do it. We'll send you a hat. Ooh. <laughs> we'll send the first person to write one. He in. Writes a dumb dad moment in. Handwritten. Via post. Gets a dumb dad hat. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. This one's from Michael. Michael, thanks for writing. Thanks in. for that. Thank you, Michael. Michael writes, "Hey guys, 
This is a story from a while ago when my first kid daughter was just moving out of her crib to a big kid bed. Mm. With this being our first child, we overdid everything as usual. And yep. when moving her from a crib to a bed, I saw on some blog that it could help make the transition easier if we had my daughter help move the crib out and her bed into the, her room. It's interesting. We didn't do that. Was that like? Oh, I see. You get a little bit of uh, C. This is all intentional. I did it when she was at like something. Uh, Magic trick. Guess what? Magic You're not a baby anymore. Boom. Get used to it. This bed's cooler. You're welcome. Of course, we had a 2,000 pound Pottery Barn sleigh crib. It's a gift. And I had taken it apart a few times to move to our house and also to move the base up and down as she got older. So my wife sat with our daughter. Every time with a cold beer and a bunch of curse words. Every time. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put this thing back together. I'm going to adjust that transformer bed. <sighs> So my wife sat with our daughter on the ground to watch me take it apart for the last time. (laughs) All the while telling my daughter she was helping and generally trying to make it an exciting day instead of a stressful one. Mm -hmm. At one point, I loosened a bolt and one side of the massive sleigh crib fell directly towards my wife and daughter. In slow motion. That's a slow motion moment. Yeah. That's a slow motion. But you're also frozen with the freeze ray. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. You're immovable. Oh, no. Because you're bent over. Yeah. You're in a position that's already compromising. You're going to feel tomorrow. If you fell asleep in a car. No way you can dive. My wife, a hero, ducked forward to protect our daughter, and the crib piece hit her on the head. Oh, no. I ran over, picked it up, and told my wife we needed to go to the ER. Oh, no. She ran into the bathroom and said she was fine. I followed her in. <laughs> I should have done that voice for following a woman in the bathroom. And <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a decision. I followed her. We'll in. Let it, I followed she was vulnerable. <laughs> I followed her in, and my quote, which I remember thirteen years later, was, "I can see bone." Oh, basically, her eyebrow was split in half. Oh, my. oh cool. Go for two faces, Halloween. So we put something in it and went to the ER. We put something in it and went to the Neo ER Sporin? with our daughter. We hope. Vaseline? What do they do when you're... When Super you're, glue. When you're it f- took eight <laughs> stitches and about 45 minutes of questions oh. to my wife as to whether I was abusing her. And we were home laughing about it. Luckily... Is he abusing you? Who? That guy. Who's that? Oh, wow. Did your husband do this? Yes. Ho- stop. <laughs> Uncuff him. Let me finish the story. Luckily, it healed without a scar, and we do actually laugh about it now. One of my earliest and dumbest moments. Mike from Virginia. Mike, thank you for writing Michael, in. Michael, that was amazing. First of all, huge credit to uh, your wife, Michael, for uh, finding the humor in it now. I can see how that maybe wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, but that's, boy, that's a good story. I imagine that thing weighed so much. Yeah. One side of that thing is like, that thing's not meant to go anywhere. Unless it's in pieces. It's a bed. It's supposed to stay there. Yeah. It's not a hospital cool. bed. Huh. But you're cool. But you're cool. Also heavy. Don't want to fall on your head. No. Um, okay. Here's my dumb dad moment. Let's hear I'm it. I'm read from somebody who sent this in. Are you ready? Here it goes. Yep. In one, two, three, go. I love the beginning of this. I'll say that. Let's go. I don't know, man. I keep thinking about this. Okay. My daughter's three. It would be great if this wasn't a dumb dad moment. Yeah. I don't know, man. I keep thinking about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if beach balls aren't allowed at games, like, what? (laughs) My daughter's three, and this story started before she was born. I should say, this. the subject of this uh, story is called pre-dumb pre-dad moment? Should we get out a sheet of paper and a pen? Is this going to be a word problem? Yeah, we're going to do like a, yeah, Dr. Emmett Brown, like, this is the space-time continuum, and we are mm-hmm. lateral parallel time. About three months before the due date, I installed new shelving in my laundry area and ripped out a bunch of janky particle board cabinets from the 50s in order to do so. I did great. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I mean, it looked good. It was solid. Held all the jugs of liquid detergent and all the other I deem unnecessary, but my wife insists it's good for clothes, so... Whatever. Careful, bud. So I defer to her, (laughs) but I digress. Flash forward two and a half months to me asking my wife if we really need to be storing all the paper bags behind the trash can. 
when she grabs them to throw them away and says, uh, is the paint supposed to look like that? F M L the oh. paint on the wall below where I installed the shelves is sagging. Okay. <laughs> and no amount of denial can get me past the idea that there is a very wet mess in the wall, especially when I poke it with my finger and my finger goes entirely into the ether of the house. I see what happened here. <laughs> Suddenly the 50s guy isn't so janky. <laughs> I went under the house and saw a lot of water coming down from the wall and the floor and had a sinking feeling about what I had done. Mm -hmm. Sinking like sinkhole. Yeah, not bad. Very good. I punched a hole in a water line. No, we know. Where I screwed the shelving <laughs> into the wall <laughs> months ago. You get that screw in there good, so it's like a slow leak at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. I ripped out the wall and ripped up the floor, repaired the pipe, and let the wood all dry out. Excuse me, what? Okay. But, yeah. Pretty good handyman. Yeah, exactly. Pretty I mean, good not handyman. that good. The <laughs> little complacent. <laughs> the plan was to replace it all in the next three days. Oh, Dad. And to have a few days to spare before the baby arrives. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you beautiful fool. <laughs> sure, that sounds great. Yeah, no, it sounds great. I can do that. I agree. It's within all my skill set, mm -hmm. clearly. Yeah, no. I'd... But I didn't account for going to work the next day and somehow just falling down onto, to, onto the corner of a boat, rib first, breaking three of them. I'm a marine biologist, no further questions, which sucks so much. Before I could even read <sighs> no further questions earlier, I was like, oh, I have so many questions. <laughs> And when you're like, I was, you know, I'm, a, I'm a marine biologist. <gasps> no questions. Oh, well, I'm glad he said marine biologist. Cause I was like, what do you mean? You're, you were fishing. I know that's, yeah, it's kind of written in a funny way. It's like, also, how where, did you fall on a boat? Where do yeah. you work? Oh, you're a marine. No questions. So here I am wall and floor open to the interior and exterior elements, <laughs> broken ribs. And. I get a text that says, hey, babe, I think uh, it was a contraction that I felt this morning. Pretty sure I'm going into labor. Oh, that pipe wasn't the only water that broke. <laughs> yeah. Pause. For I was waiting for that. Waiting for it. Hold for applause. Laugh, break, laugh, break, laugh, break. Oh, my gosh, guys. Sit Okay. Down. Oh, yeah. If you need to pull over, do so. So you're driving carefully. Can I tell you what it's like to repair a wall and floor and have a newborn and recovering wife and broken ribs all at the same time. Okay. Pretty sure I died. <laughs> <laughs> because not sleeping for eight straight days just is impossible. Oh, oh yeah. I also found termites in the wall when it was open. Pre dumb dad signed Jesus Christ the seventh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ the seventh. Thanks for writing. I think we've read a review of yours. Oh, man. I mean, I know where the termites came from. You were feeding them. Yeah, exactly. It just you were like, marinating their dinner. Yeah, I bet they're big too. Yeah, I bet they were nice, hydrated. Yeah, <laughs> they're doing great. I thought they were cockroaches. They yeah. were termites. Oh god! Half of them were laying on their stomachs, just patting their bellies. Yeah. What's up, man? You here for the buffet? All you can eat? There's some redwood down there. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the old water hole. <laughs> wow, that is good. Uh, what was his name? Jesus Christ Seven. <laughs> Jesus Christ Seven. Thanks, Jesus Christ Seven. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's just like the domino effect of it all. When you said just... we know. I did know this as well. Like you said, I poked a hole in the water line. You're like, yeah, we know. Did you also know that she was going to go into the labor? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a very. You're doing a project <laughs> right before the baby comes. Good luck. Good luck. That was always the end game. Yeah. The journey we took to get there, I did not know. But it was it's a just, really fun one. It's so strange. Like, you wonder if the fact that he drilled a hole into his pipe, which caused him to have to rip up the hole and the floor, and now they've got this big DIY problem, and then he broke his ribs. You wonder if any of that induced labor. Because <laughs> there's spicy food. Some people take the whole salad. Yeah. 
the spicy food, and then there's the spicy situation, <laughs> which is what we were in. It's also how you got pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, everybody, for writing um, those in. We've had a, a fun time yeah, reading them. Thank you so much. I think we should continue doing this each time. It feels good to read one from I think somebody, it, so please send them in. Dumbdadpod at gmail.com. Yeah. And we are at the Dumb Dads on all platforms. Thanks yep. so much for listening. Please uh, review this podcast. We'll, we'll go back to reading some reviews maybe next week. And if uh, we ever get one, we ever get, <laughs> no, we have we have a couple queued up that we haven't read yet. Um, so yeah, write in some reviews on Apple Podcasts. Give us those five stars. It really helps us push us up when people are looking for new parenting podcast. I know we don't have advice, but we're just here to commiserate and have fun. Listen, it's all you need is a, somebody else admitting that they did something dumber than you did this week, and you're like, you know, I feel pretty good about myself. That's all we need. And that's what we need here. Over and that's what we're here for. At the Dumb Dad Podcast. Thanks so much to at Verdu on SoundCloud for the music to this podcast, and as always, to my incredible wife, Annie, who edits this podcast. I mean, you have a joke to Yep, take I just out. typed in dad summer jokes. We're going to read the very first one. Ready? Okay. Here it goes. Why aren't lobsters generous? Why aren't lobsters generous? Because they're shellfish? Yeah, they're shellfish. That's terrible. It is. What did the ocean say to the beach? It didn't. It waved. Yeah. Where do birds go when they say they go on vacation? Oh, Laguna Beach. <laughs> Laguna Beach. Someplace cheap. Is Laguna Beach cheap? All right, we gotta go. <laughs> Are beads cheap? Bye. Bye. Welcome to the world, little one. Welcome <laughs> to life. How do I stop this? The Dumb Dad Podcast is proudly presented by Bet Online.